little did I know, heading up to see Matt at Lenny Coloto, that I'd be spending the better part of the afternoon with him, getting the story of the winery and barrel tasting, magnificent Paso Syrahs. Seven years ago, my wife and I were on a road trip in Paso. We pulled off to the side of the road, went on a dirt road to this little wooden shack, and that was the beginning of Lenny Coloto. Now they're a full-blown winery, uh, producing world-class wines in Paso. If you're up there, make sure you check them out. So uh, Lenny Coloto is, um, the name comes from a soil type. It's a, it's a soil series. It's a steep, rocky, calcium-based soil, so limestone's in it, and uh, you find it on, on slopes of 20 degrees to, to about 40 degrees slopes, and um, it's old uh, maritime deposits of calcium, so the, the properties here were underwater 10,000 years ago. Um, there's whalebone fossils in it, scallops, and, and you find um, this is, this is a, the distinction of, um, of this Willow Creek AVA. When I make wines, I make regional wines. I make wines that represent this area. Um, I blend everything I, I produce. So I'm, I'm working with Syrah, Grenache, Mauved. I have a little bit of Senso, a little bit of Tanat. I have a little bit of Grenache Blanc, Pique Bleu Blanc, Viognier, Carignan. And um, I see it as a spice rack. It's, it's, it's a lot like cooking. Um, you don't go and prepare a, a ribeye and just just throw it on the grill and, and and serve it up without having anything anything by its side without putting any seasonings on it it's something where you have to you have to think ahead of how you want to prepare and what what flavor you're going for and this comes into uh, play when I when I work with Grenache I make a wine called sticks and stones sticks and stones is Grenache heavy but it's not hundred percent Grenache it's, it needs a little bit of Syrah in there. It needs a little bit of uh, Mauvet in there. The Syrah adds backbone, adds viscosity to the Grenache. The uh, Mauvet adds leather and salt and earth um, to the wine. It's very, very um, important to put these different components together. And you can move it back and forth. So you can, you can, um, you can put these components together and, and find that your Grenache is, is way too fruity. And you want to bring leather and earth into it and, and, and subdue it. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll begin to throw Movet out. And I have different clones of Movet. I have different, different um, locations where, where I grow Movet. And they each have their own distinct, distinct quality. And mm. it's, uh, it's like salting things. It's uh, done in small increments. I usually do it by feel. I blend early. I start co-fermenting um, right at harvest time. And then I will... Uh, you know, um, make make movements, and and sometimes these these blends. I'll, I'll put all my barrels down on the ground, and I'll and I'll have a vision of what I want to do. I've, I've, I'll taste it, everything. Okay, I think it's gonna work like this. But then to keep the randomness in wine making for me, I'll I'll just go into a barrel and count to a good number, and <laughs> and you know, seven number seven, twelve, whatever, whatever, whatever the number is, and uh, and. This keeps my winemaking unpre unpredictable, in a sense, for myself. I, I, I think that uh, we get too carried away with, with um, quantitative winemaking, and qualitative winemaking is really the goal. Uh, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, it matters what the flavor is. It matters that um, you enjoy the wine, and that my best bottle of wine I can make is a bottle of wine that you pour a glass of it, you and a friend, sitting there and you're drinking it and you're talking you're not talking about the wine you're talking you're talking about great times and and, and laughing and you go to that bottle again you pour it you look to pour the glass and and the bottle's empty and you go oh my gosh where'd it go and that that to me is my best bottle of wine i can make because it, it brings about conversation it brings about about um happiness and Dry, dry farming is uh, all the rain, all the moisture. Um, irrigation you're gonna get is coming from mother nature. It's coming from rain. And um, you plant your vines and they're, you put them in the ground. You usually have to space them out a little bit wider. Um, so we're looking at um, anywhere from eight by eight to uh, 12 by 12 spacing. Um, this allows the plant to have more, more, um, more soil for it and, and more moisture per plant. 
um, in that soil. The wines are intense. The quantity of fruit is, is, is diminished because you don't have a lot of plants per acre. So you can't, you can't expect a plant to carry 20 pounds of fruit and, and, and end up with four tons per acre. It's just not, that's not feasible. Uh, but yielding uh, on my dry farm vineyards are about half ton per acre to one ton per acre is, is pretty reasonable. Um, and, it's, and it's a true picture of, of the growing season. When, when people ask, you know, how, how's the drought affecting you? Um, a dry farm vineyard is, is the, the purest example of how the drought affects you because your, your only choices are dropping fruit off the vine to diminish the workload of the plant or cutting your, your shoots so your water doesn't have to go as far out to the tips of your of your shoots and um, trying to keep that that moisture down in your clusters and for the health of the plant mm. so it's it's a game you can dry farm in certain areas where you end up with with rainfalls and and some some areas in in europe you see you see summer uh rainfalls i think it's called the mistral mm -hmm, and, exactly. and, and um, where you have those you end up with that watering it's, it's a natural form and you know, it can be a great year if it happens at the right time. It can be a bad year if it happens at the, at the wrong time. And um, California or modern day um, commercial winemaking has definitely, um, or grape growing, has followed along in a way of, you know, let's get tonnage, let's get, let's get, we can get tonnage and get quality. And, and, and that's, you know, the, 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 the strategy all too often, I think. And um, when you really sink it down to the basics of playing just with the weather and letting that dictate your your crop loads and your growing season, then uh, it's a whole different it's a whole different feeling, and uh, you don't have that option of fertigating, of adding fertilizers through irrigation. You don't have that option of of tapping your plants with a little bit of water because you see a heat wave coming. Um, it's it's really you have to play with a different set of tools and I use this dry farming to um, to learn to learn how to take my other plants and um, push them to their to, to their edge as, as I said uh, I've, I've said this before it's uh, my plants never look all that great <laughs> <laughs> but, but they it, produce yeah. very intense fruit that that shows a struggle of life w winemaking is for me, it's one of the few industries where you can go full circle, where you can uh, see a piece of property, dream of planting a vineyard on it, uh, lay it out, choose your choose your plants. I mean, you can do this in cooking, you can do this in in, in gardening. Um, where where it changes, I think, is that you plant the vineyard. It takes, uh, it takes four years prior to pulling your, your first crop off of it. You bring it into your winery, which you also get to plan and build and um, decide how you wanna lay it out, how you wanna process your fruit, how you wanna store your fruit, what you wanna store it in, whether you wanna go to oak, concrete, stainless steel. Um, you have all these options and sizes of barrels. Then, you finally get to blend it. You get to put it together and create, take, take what you grew, take what you planted so many years prior, turn it into wine, store it in barrel for, for these years, create a, let it become itself. Let, let it um, personif you know, becomes personified because when you work with it intimately, you have a relationship with them and, and, and you go, oh gosh, you know, this block is always such a pain. It always high acid. You know, it does this thing when it ferments, and and but it turns out great. And uh, over the years, I've I've made wines that wines like Problem Child and Overthinker, and yeah. Well, I mean, I think the start, you know, the whole story. It starts with um, my first time on a vineyard, uh, mogging, picking you know material other than grapes. You're sorting fruit. Um, well, and, and picking up picking lugs, the big, the 50 pound lugs that um, the pickers are throwing their, their clusters into and you're moving them over into the, the trailer on the tractor. And um, that's your first time sorting fruit, really. Um, and it's so different than going to the grocery store and looking for what you wanna buy. Look, look, you know, whether it's, um, whether it's uh, lettuce, vegetables, um, fruit, you, you have an eye for it and, and you just have to use your eye. When you're when you're in the vineyard, and, and 
moving forward to that, you know, another job I had was uh, weed whacking. Trimming, trimming the terraces at James Berry was my first job out of college. And it was, uh, it was eye-opening to me because uh, for, it seemed like uh, two weeks we sat um, with a weed trimmer and a hedger going through the terraces. It's, uh, I believe, three acres, super steep uh, in between the plants and selecting out lupins and California poppies and taking everything else out. So we'd let those, those um, flowering um, perennials go to, um, perennials annuals, um, go to a, a seed, which would then allow for a be beautiful bloom the following year. And just because you'd gotten rid of all the seed counts mm. of, of the of the the grasses and and any of the obnoxious weeds that were there, and you allowed the the competition to move in favor of the poppies and the lupins, and um, that was that was eye opening. I mean, I just um, it it brought in my oh, this is how it works. This is how this is how nature works. Is it's about you know moving things in directions, and they don't happen overnight. Yes, you can go out there and seed it with ten thousand seeds, or or you can go out there and keep selecting things and moving moving plants on your property around um, and that's where I started I then went to uh, Justin winery and went for an interview I believe on a on a Friday could have been could have been a uh, could have been I sent out my resume on a Friday got an interview on Saturday got a job on Monday for a thousand dollars a month as an apprentice and it was uh, you wear every hat you need to uh, drive forklift, which I had no idea was such a big part of winemaking. But um, fruit is heavy. You have to move it in from the vineyard to your, to your facility. And uh, barrels are heavy. You have to move those around. Um, glass is heavy. Everything, everything kind of um, uh, revolves. You can't, you're kind of stopped if you can't move things with a forklift. I have a degree in biochemistry, but I learned that very quickly that there was um, it's more of a function logistics business you have to do what you can do in the vineyard to produce your fruit and then when you're ready to pick you you, you both can use the quantitative numbers of of bricks and pH and everything like that but if it doesn't taste good it doesn't look good then then you have to back away from it and wait for wait for the flavors to come around really the the ball was rolling to build a facility to build that first facility I um, didn't have any money. Uh, I had to, uh, I did a credit line against my inventories, found a, uh, a builder, John Cloud, who um, would work with me and told him what I wanted to build was a, a 40 by 50 uh, square foot building with 20 foot eaves, two by eight um, construction so I could put enough insulation in the walls and, and nighttime air cooling fan in it. And that's, that's what I did and I sweated the copper pipes in that building um, for my, my hose down stations and um, did as much of the work. I, I did a backhoe to bring the, the gravity water line down the hill, which mm. you know goes up to those tanks up there and came off that hill with that. So I, um, you know, it's, it was the start of the process. And, and that time, you know, my, my guys that helped with uh, bringing our power in from Oakdale Road, which sits about 1,200 feet from here. I, I glued the conduits together, put them in the ground for that, uh, learned to drive a D5 bulldozer while this was all happening and drive backhoes. And, and my friends would, um, that were working on the project, they, they helped me out. I, I couldn't do it on my own. And, and uh, they, gave me, they gave me the right price to allow me to, to, to work on my own. And, uh, we've been slowly rolling to a state, um, more and more, a higher percentage of a state fruit. We're about 80% a state right now. I planted another vineyard uh, down the road. It's uh, 20 acres. Learn, learned from my first vineyards, uh, put everything on uh, very drought resistant, um, high drought resistant uh, root stocks to mitigate the droughts and, and also um, I can deal with more vigor of my plants. If the plants are bigger, I can always cut them down. I, I originally went after an idea of, of very devigorating root stocks, but then struggling to get enough, enough growth on them to uh, survive uh, winter kill, um, spring freezes, uh, everything uh, really um, spirals 
when you have divagrating rootstocks. For my future, I've planted new clones. I've planted um, the Monastrel clone, uh, which is also known as Moved. I've put in uh, Carignan, uh, some different clones of Syrah, different clones of Grenache. I'll just, I'll just, you know, keep increasing the flavor profiles and hopefully um, making new wines as we keep moving forward. I'm, I'm not in the business of, uh, of replicating what I've done in the past. I want to make new flavors and, and new wines. And when you drink Linné Clotto wines, it's a journey. It's not, it's not about, oh, I love the 2009 Sticks and Stones or Nemesis. It's about, this is the liquid photograph of the vintage. This is the best fruit I can show you that I can farm with this with the circumstances of weather and the, and the location I'm in and this is it